Okay, good morning. So here's where we're at now. Um, I have found a spot that I like for the engine location, which is right there, which is exactly 21 and 13 sixteenths from the back of the sway bar to the front of the crank pulley. That's my reference point, so I know to get it back there as I move things around. And I love the uh, engine stand that bolts onto the engine mount location, uh, allows me to move things around. But what it doesn't do is allow me to get the engine where I want it and then build the mounts to it. And the reason this is important beyond just the normal locating is that I also want to set the pinion angle and realize that with a three degree tilt, um, I need to be mindful of the back of the transmission elevation as well. So just because I'm happy with where the engine is in elevation doesn't mean that I'm going to be happy with where the transmission is because it could end up hanging too low. It could be higher than it needs to be. Um, just lots of consideration. So I realized I needed to get the two together and I need to be able to tilt them uh, really easily uh, so I can get everything figured out and then hold it there while I put on the uh, engine or while I uh, fabricate some engine mounts. Um, at least get them tacked in place so then I can get the engine transmission out of there, uh, get them in strong, and then put everything back together. And so while we're going through all that, oh, and then there's also the whole header issue, which was needed the headers to drop down uh, quickly behind the block instead of uh, angling their way back down the side of the transmission because the more angle down the side of the transmission, the less uh, foot room I have for pedals. And as it sits right now, the firewall is going to be, uh, the back of the firewall, the firewall is going to be flush with the dashboard front. And that dashboard uh, detaches, so it might move that. I think I will. Um, and make just some longer top on it and see how that looks. But anyway, in the meantime, I've got plenty of room to get in and out of the door opening. The seat will be slightly behind the door, but that still works. And so what I started doing was um, made some brackets um, to bolt onto the front of the engine so that I could attach those to what's left of the stand, hack the middle section out of the stand, and then that allows me to play with some tilting by putting stuff under the wheels if I need to go up. And I've already found the minimum low spot, so I know I won't go too low because I just that's I have uh, pulley issues. Um, plus, I want to keep some clearance under the car, of course. So that's where I'm at. And what I hope to do in this little section is to finish getting the front attached to the stand, free the stand off the engine, and then demonstrate how it kind of rolls around. I already made um, a little bracket that I've got uh, bolted into the wings on the side of the T56 on both sides that... Um, while it's not super sturdy, it should be sturdy enough once the uh, front brackets are bolted in. And I'm leaving the header in place for now, but once I'm building the, uh, the engine mount, I'm sure I'll pull that out of there. I just want to make sure that the engine mount setup that I have uh, cooperates with those. Um, the header search has been a little bit of a thing. Uh, I've ended up ordering four different headers from Summit that I will be returning three of three of them. So obviously keeping them in good condition and not scratching or dinging them or anything, but uh, figuring the header out so that it can dive down um, early is a thing. Um, there's another set of headers that are coming that are, I think, probably better for locating, but they are only available in a mild steel uh, painted as opposed to these uh, stainless ones. And I intend to wrap these so that the heat goes uh, downstream. Um, there's a uh, there's an awesome uh, engine masters on uh, Motor Train On Demand that uh, do, did some testing. And while the rumor was that uh, getting the heat uh, it to stay inside the pipes helped flow, that was kind of proven not to be the case. Um, but what it does do is gets the heat out of the engine compartment. Um, which is something I've noticed on the Chevelle because I have those headers wrapped. And so wrapping mild headers, probably not ideal, uh, mild steel headers, because even though you paint them, um, the condensation and, and, and the cycling in there, I'm guessing the mild steel is just not going to perform the same. And I've had the wrapped stainless in the Chevelle for 
um, geez, going on since 2018, and I've looked at those periodically, peeked through uh, whenever it's up on a lift, and they're doing fine. They're not rusting at all. So I think I'm going to just make these work. Um, passenger side is going to have a little less foot room, but, you know, who cares? But uh, there we go. So I'll, uh, I'll try to put more together as I start making stuff and uh, see how it works out. So half my plan worked. Um, the heavy duty brackets for the front uh, bolt on um, to the front accessory uh, bolts and uh, a little bit of the water pump and they're holding up fine. My little uh, weenie brackets in the back uh, were fine if it was static, uh, but as soon as you tried to roll it, they uh, failed miserably. So we went with the old school uh, dolly uh, and block of wood until you find uh, three degrees. So this is where, this is the angle of the engine. It's set perfectly where I want it. And now I am putting uh, engine mounts on and getting a plate that the, uh, that will then get boxed uh, to the frame. And so, let's see, there's a view of an engine mount with the, uh, the Holly swap plate on it. And then I'm coming in with a, a piece of steel, uh, bolting it to that, and then I will build a box uh, from the frame to the piece of steel. So stay tuned, you'll see more. Well, now I've done it. I started tacking stuff in, which means that I need to finish both sides, get the transmission cross member in so I can support stuff. Actually, I don't have to get that in, but I want to. And then I'm going to have to take off the intake and get the engine hoist in here to get the engine out. I can I could lift the whole car up uh, once I have the... Uh, the mounts all in, but I cannot take the body off this pile of engine um, until all of these are done. Okay, underway. Oh yeah, and that funny pointed thing uh, sticking down uh, where there is a red colored level sitting in the background, that is going to be a crossover uh, to the other side, but I just ran it long um, and it won't need to happen until the boxes are in um, and it, the the way I'm putting it together the engine will certainly be supported by what I'm putting in but uh, that will uh, connect to the other side uh, just for more stability and don't want to try to do that with an engine in the way um, so yeah there we go so I got a little sidelined um, I ended up uh, building the two front engine mounts, getting those in. Uh, haven't connected the bottom of them yet. I did the transmission mount, and then I set the pinion exactly with weight on it, and then was like, yeah, let me just go ahead and get the drive shaft ordered. So I ordered the drive shaft and uh, got that in. And then while I had all that placed, I tore into the, uh, the uh, transmission tunnel project, which I'll show later, but I wanted to wrap this uh, this part up. Um, so I've now got the uh, enough in there and underweight and just kind of aligned and made sure everything uh, played nice with like getting the headers in and out with the engine in and stuff like that. I can see how it'd be very easy to mock things up, forget about the fact that you need to work on it later and then have problems. But um, so I still need to, now I'm going to take the engine and transmission out. Actually, I'm going to roll all this away from the, uh, away from the body and then um, get, the, uh, get those out, separate them, and then put them back kind of into storage, um, roll the frame back in, and then uh, work on the cross member under the mounts. And yeah, it's funny, they look big, um, and they are not much wider than the original cross mount, but they are, uh, have got a little bit of wiggle room in them, uh, both up, down, forward, back, um, on that plate. And yes, I could have triangulated that a little differently, but I liked the heft of it. It's not in the way of anything. And uh, it was nice when I set the engine in there, they did not budge. Um, so the cross section underneath is probably just playing it safe. Um, I don't think those things are going anywhere, but I'm going to still go ahead and uh, go across the uh, bottom of it. Uh, if nothing else, it'll protect the back of the, uh, the oil sump on the, uh, on the Holly uh, swap uh, uh, oil pan 
um, anyway, so that's where it's at. And uh, thanks for watching. Okay, so here's the finished product on the uh, engine uh, cross mount. Um, that is a four by two. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I had said I'd left these guys running long. And so I did some measuring and um, put the four by two in between there. So this is kind of acting as a strap. And then on the back side, because it was close for two, about six and a half inches or six inches, what I did was this tail, we left it long and then did a delicate notch uh, with the cutoff wheel on the backside and then gave myself a sharp bend into where it would hit the uh, two by four and then welded on the inside of that, kind of tacked all this in, actually welded this in on the inside and then laid that and that today decided to just knock down all the outside corner welds um, some of them were just absolutely gorgeous some of them were a little globby um, did some grinding found some porosity did a little spotting and then just cleaned them all up the inside welds i just went ahead and, and left um, that's pretty typical of them um, i didn't feel a need to grind those down but the outside corner ones that show i, I did um, these ovals are access to the engine mount or circle and oval are access to the engine mount uh, studs and i learned this on my uh, a body chevelle the manufacturer just leaves some holes under there so you can feed a wobbly head through um, and what i like to do is feed it through with the uh with the bolt uh stab it through uh get it in there and then put the nut on um, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, you'd want to use flange heads either way. It's just easier with the, uh, with the uh, socket head um, stabbing it through. But anyway, that's what those are for. And then I realized if I get moisture in there and it runs down into uh, this cavity, I'm probably going to drill a hole on each end here and here so that whatever moisture gets in, it can drain out. Um, but anyway, so that's it. I'm going to... Uh, Put the uh, Pour 15 stuff on there, uh, get it cleaned up, and then um, do that, uh, finish off the evening with that. Anyway, so that is the engine mount. On the transmission mount, here's a close-up of that. And I just used uh, angle iron to create a shelf, uh, drop down a little bit from the underside of the floor. And then that is 3 8 plate, and then that is a uh one and a half by two and a half quarter wall uh tube and that is really typical of what i saw of universal mounts i looked online a bunch to see what else i could find um and just kind of imitate or copy something and that was a that was a common one so got that set up so there's the mounts and uh next uh, next video will be uh floors and figuring out pedal clusters and all that stuff um and uh, tunnels. So, all right. Hey, thanks again for watching.